Yoni Katz here, Rabbi Manis, Friedman's biggest fan. So yesterday, um, I was giving a tour slash filming a documentary for a network that came all the way from New Zealand, a whole big crew, and I was taking them through 770, and I was taking them to the Scribe and the streets of Crown Heights, and then obviously our last stop was going to Rabbi Manis Friedman, YouTube's most popular rabbi. Um, they were very excited. And here we have Cam, who is a seasoned journalist reporter. He's uh, interviewed many uh, prominent politicians and people throughout the years, namely Donald Trump and more. And uh, obviously the longer version of this channel will be publicized and published on the network and Robbie Friedman's channel eventually. But there was one and a half minute section that really blew my mind that you just see Robbie Friedman's wisdom as he answers this question. And um, I'm going to play the little clip for you. And again, because this was a bit of a, I don't know if tense is the right word, but a pressure point. Um, and I imagine many people around the world think about this when the Jewish people call themselves the chosen nation, the chosen people. So here we go. Cam is about to ask the question to Rabbi Freeman. And I want to see how, I want you to see how he answers so beautifully. People of, of the Christian faith, for instance, understand the Jewish people to be the chosen race, and you talk of yourselves as being the chosen people as, as well. Um, I'm just thinking of other cultures who might find that surprising that you've been chosen on top of them and that they don't merit a place of, of being chosen as well. They don't merit to be chosen as well, sort of this elite status. How will the rabbi answer it? There's nothing I can do about that. Being chosen means you have no choice. Not that we were asked, we were chosen. And either we fulfill our mission or we fail. At those, those are the options. But is it kind of like the elite class, if you're the chosen people? Uh, that's a very good question. You have a teacher and you have a classroom of students. Who's more important? If we are chosen to be a light to the nations, then who's more important, the light or the nations? It's a good question, depending on which perspective, you know, which point of view. For the student, the teacher is more important. To the teacher, the student is more important. So we'll argue about it. But if our purpose is to bring the word of God to the people, doesn't that make the people more important? OMG, did you just see what he did there? <laughs> I was sitting there in the room watching this. And, you know, you just think, how, how is he going to get out of it? Or like, well, how can he make this possibly sound good? And just the way he framed that it with a teacher and a student and who's more important, the teacher, the student, you could argue about it, but if we're a light unto the nations, doesn't that sort of make the nations even more important? Like we're here to provide the light for them. And obviously there's much more discussion that goes into this and a lot of ramifications, but you just see a teacher, a rabbi, a wise man who's been teaching well over 50 years, answer the question humbly or with humility, um, you see him provide a whole different perspective, sort of like a 360 or whatever you want to call it. And, you know, this reporter was asking many questions throughout the interview um, about many different subjects, which I can't necessarily talk about right now. And he's almost like going Pierce Morgan on the rabbi. It was like, it, but in a respectful way, but he's a journalist, he's a reporter. And just watching that and just sort of in my own context of understanding what it means to be a Jew and a light unto the nations, and what I do on YouTube together with the rabbi and some of my own videos and the tours of 770 where I have nations of the world coming from all around the world, every religion, Mormons, uh, Muslims, Christians, and they're coming to learn and they're coming to be inspired perhaps and learn about purpose and creation. You really see that God says it's not enough for, for me to have my relationship with the Jewish people, like he says in Isaiah, you have to be a light unto the nations. So what does that say about the nations? So the rabbi did such a great job. Let's continue spreading the light, spreading the love to the entire world. 
And I just want to continue with this uh, mission here on our YouTube channel. And if you want to email me about anything that you see on the channel, please email me at rabbiyonikatz at gmail.com.